color here to make this a little bit neater okay yeah so that we're not overcrowding everything okay uh, and let me just put this one here this ruled line let's say down here and let's just put this one here if that's okay for everybody okay whoops okay and what we need to do is we need to calculate this this uh, this particular we need to fill in all of these values okay uh, let's just keep in mind that n is the number of paired observations so n is the number of paired observations in this case i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i have n is equal to ten observations here there's ten paired observations okay so what does this correlation coefficient represent okay you now one way to one way to sort of figure it out is by doing a scatter plot so if we do a scatter plot a scatter plot okay uh, of the relationship the relationship of the relationship uh, between of x with with y okay we're going to assume y is the dependent variable i end up with a scatter plot and it looks something like this okay so here's my x's x variable along here my y variable along here my independent variable goes here independent okay and my dependent variable goes along here dependent okay and let's see our values range mm, up to about eight and up to about seven here so let me just do this one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight and it's up to about seven here so let's say one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to just fill in points in space so at five it's just like an xy coordinate so at five six so here's five I'm going to go up to six, so I have a point in space here. Uh, at eight, seven, so here's eight. I'm going to go up to seven, so I have a point in space here. Uh, at two, four, so at two, I'm going to go up to four, so I have a point in space here. At two, two, so I have a point in space here. At three, five, here's three. There's five, so I have a point in space there. At six, six, so six, six is in around here, okay? Uh, seven, five, seven, five is in around here somewhere, okay? Uh, four, five gives us a value that's in around here and 7 7 gives us a value that's in around here yes if I'm not mistaken and finally 1 1 gives us a value that's in here okay so what we have from a scatter plot is we have all of the observations uh, plotted in two space here yeah okay because we have an x and a y coordinate yeah now hopefully what we can actually see here is this is that there seems to be a relationship between the x values and the y values in particular what i mean by that relationship is there seems to be a sort of a trend and the trend seems to be going up in this particular direction i don't know what the line of best fit would be and that'll be the next video to calculate the line of best fit but it wouldn't be unreasonable to assume yeah that the line of best fit would look something like this here i don't know yeah okay uh, but really what we can what we can actually see here is this is that the trend seems to be positive uh, which would be indicative that there's a positive association between these two, these two variables, okay? But more importantly, what the correlation coefficient is going to try to identify for us is not just the trend's direction, whether it's, whether it's positive, okay? So whether it's, whether it's positive, okay? Or whether it's negative, okay? Or whether there's no trend at all, okay? It's not just going to identify the directionality of the trend, but what it's going to tell us is the strength of the association. And what we mean by strength, the stronger the association is, the closer these particular points are wrapped around this particular fictitious line that I have through this particular data set at this stage, yeah? Okay. So that's really what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate that strength of the relationship. So I want to do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is this is as I said our formula that we're going to use, the formula that we're going to use, I'll just write it down once more here. It's R is equal to N times the sum of the XY column minus the sum of the X column times the sum of the Y column. That needs to be divided by N times the sum of the X squared column minus the sum of the x column to be squared okay that's a factor times n times the sum of the y squared column minus the sum of the y's to be squared that's another factor and it's the square root of that okay so it's the square root of that particular that particular that particular product there and that gives us a correlation coefficient so i need to actually calculate this so i'm just going to go down through the values so five, so five squared is 25, okay, five fives is 25. Eight eights is, uh, well, what is eight eights? Eight eights is 64, okay. Two twos is four, two twos is four, three threes is nine, 
Six sixes is 46. Seven sevens is 49. Four fours is 16. Seven sevens is 49. And finally, we have once times one is one. So we have the x squared values here. The y squared values are going to be, well, six, six sixes is 46. Seven sevens is 49. Four fours is 16. Two twos is four. Five fives is 25. Six sixes is 36. Five fives is 25. Five fives is 25. Seven sevens is 49. And once one is one, okay? So now we have the y squared values. And what we also need, I'll need my calculator in a moment to sum up these columns to make sure I'm not making any mistakes. We need the xy's, this is the cross product. We need the x values times the y values. The paired values, the product of the paired values. Five sixes is 40, okay? Uh, eight sevens is 56, okay? Two fours is eight, two twos is four, three fives is 15, six sixes is 26, uh, seven fives is 25, four